guys welcome to this episode of precious kitchen today i'm actually not in my kitchen i'm in my brother-in-law's kitchen it's my nephew-in-law's birthday is there really any relationship like nephew-in-law well anyway my husband's nephew so my nephew-in-law yeah so it's his birthday and i came in here and i met my brother-in-law trying to make some kati kati and i just popped right in and took over from him so i'm going to show you how i make this this is full jama jama and kati kati it's a delicacy in cameroon you just you just have to love it so um by the way if you hear the noise and the background yeah yeah so let's get started with the ingredients okay right here we have jam and jama we actually get this year during the summer and um uh, this is frozen so i'm going to defrost it before um you know cooking it and then here we have tomatoes i have a lot because i'm using um some of it for the jam and jama and i'm using uh, just a little bit for the cat cat and then we have um this apple is not part of the cooking. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why it's there. Okay, we have on onions, and then we have just this, some um, ginger and habanero pepper, some peeled garlic, just to give the cat cat some heat. This is totally optional if you don't want any garlic in your food, in your cat cat, because it's really like a plain traditional dish. But I love doing that. Okay, so now we have um. The flour for the fufu, this is semolina, but normally we use corn flour, but since I couldn't lay my hands on corn flour here, we are going with semolina. And then right here we have palm oil. What is kati kati without palm oil? I mean, this is what gives it that authentic ethnic flavor. And for the chicken, I want you to know that um, this was this is farm raised, not flat, like... This is what we call your yeah, farm chicken. Like it's really it's harder than the chicken you normally find in the stores. The one you find in the stores, yeah, are so soft, so they are not ideal for this. You want chicken that's really hard, and this has been burnt. So I I made this already burnt. But if you have chicken that has not been burnt, I will advise you to just make sure you pat wash your chicken, your full chicken. You pat it dry, then hold it over a flame. Over your flame, if you have a, if you can have a flame, you hold it over it and let it make sure it burns it. You know, when it burns it, it gives it that smoky flavor and that's just so delicious. So let's get started with the cooking. So this is um, my katakata in the pot, my katakata chicken in the pot. I've put in some water to cook it. Remember, this is really hard chicken, so I wanted to cook it to perfection. When it's like almost done, then I'll go in with my tomatoes, onions, palm oil, and I'll show you that. Okay, meanwhile, on this other side, I have water for my fufu. So while it, this, the kata kata chicken is cooking, I'm going to make the fufu and I'm going to make the jama jama in the other pot. So the, when the water boils, I'll show you how I make the fufu. My water for fufu is almost boiled, but before I make the fufu, I want to just start frying the tomatoes for the vegetable, that's in jama jama. So... I've been heating up some vegetable oil. You could use palm oil if you like, but I prefer doing this with vegetable oil. I've been heating that up for a while, so I'll just go in with my chopped onions. Onion is nicely sauteed. In goes the tomatoes. to fry until it's really all the acidity is gone and it's really you know nice while that fries I'll make the fufu yes to make the fufu you just um, first of all some people go with their flour straight into the boiling water that is wrong 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 because when you do that it's going to form a lot of lumps so what I do is I just take some cool normal water and I put some of the flour which as you can see I've done you know just Take some of this and put it to the, into the water and then I make a paste with it and then you know this is a little too thick so I'll just um, add in a little bit of water to it just so yeah so loosen that up a little bit so this is what goes into the boiling water first then the rest of the flour comes in my water is boiling for the fufu so I'll just reduce a little bit have to be really careful so that that will get added you know as I go on then this paste goes and I start stirring even before I pour it in because I just want no lumps so I do that gradually 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 until it's all gone keep stirring keep stirring no stop you know to make sure everything because once you stop those lumps start to form so when it makes like a really thick um, 
like pap. <laughs> I'm looking for the word here. Yeah, when it's really thick, you can see how it, what it looks like. Um, then I'll go in with the rest of the flour. So this acts as a base to help me mix the rest of the flour properly. So with one hand, I'll keep stirring and I'll just, you know, just keep stirring, just keep stirring, just keep stirring. I bought, it's the, all nice I bought, I bought the subway now. Now look at the texture. The soft, soft I don't want it too uh, soft, you know. That's what it looks like. I added water a couple of times. It was the quantity I had was actually more than the pot, so I had to reduce it. So make sure you use a pot that can really accommodate all your flour. Okay, so my tomatoes, my tomatoes, my tomatoes have fried and fried, and I've just I just went in there with some maggi, you know, to taste. This is what it looks like. I peeled and scattered it in there. So right now I'm putting in salt. Yeah, that should be it. And then this is um, habanero pepper. I just threw some in there because kids are going to be eating this. I didn't want to grind it and add it so that the heat doesn't discourage the kids from eating. So right now, just going with my vegetables. That's the jam and jam, boiled and sliced. The leaves are normally big, so when you boil them, it's good to put them on a chopping board and just cut them so that they can be, you know, eat it really at sizes that are. Um, Easily edible, easily eatable, not really long. Okay, so I'll just mix this and let that simmer for a while. The manjama is nice and ready. Um, this is plastic wrap which I've cut and I'll just put in my. Like that, make them any size you want. The chicken has boiled and boiled and boiled and boiled, and I'm sure it's like, you know, ready. But you can't, you can't really overcook this particular kind of chicken because it's really hard. So it's at this point that I put in my maggi. I seasoned it with salt when it started boiling. So I now put in maggi, and then I'm also going to put in the. Tomatoes, onions, chopped garlic. I left out the ginger because I didn't want to put the peanut and leave it right now. So. Tomato, onions, and chopped garlic all go in. And palm oil. That's what makes kata 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 kata. So I'll just mix this and let this simmer together and that's basically it when it simmers together you know and the water is like all gone and it's just a chicken and the oil then that's that pattern and pepper pepper is really important in kata kata but i just dropped in my habanero because again kids are going to be eating and they, they don't they don't like um pepper so i just dropped in the pepper so that those who want it can press it in there you know, in theirs. so I'll show you what it looks like when it is done Katu Katu is ready you can see what it looks like ah, I can't wait to taste this the Katu Katu is ready mm. this is my own plate everyone is eating already